Hey there! Thank you for tuning in to Duckbricks, and welcome to Bionicle Fan and Reviews, the show where I review all the fan-created, canonized Bionicle models. These are not official sets, but instead of been officially inducted into the Generation 1 Bionicle storyline, either via LEGO-sanctioned contests like the 05 Dark Hunter and Rahi contests, or the more ongoing TTV canonization contests. This model is actually from the Rahi contest in 05. This is the Metru Mantis. Obviously, since it's a Rahi, there isn't really any deep backstory or lore to get into. These were just a species of praying mantis Rahi that frequented Metru Nui and served as a minor nuisance to some of the Matoran, but they weren't a major threat. But story aside, let me talk about the four key points in which I'll review all these models. Number one is posability, so can I get this into good poses or are there any stability issues that I need to be worried about? Number two is building techniques, so am I generally happy or impressed with the way this is built, or is it just borrowing different parts from other sets? Number three is overall aesthetics, so agnostic of the storyline, does this aesthetically look good, am I happy with the color scheme, and in general does it represent the animal that it is supposed to be, in this case a praying mantis? And number four is believability in universe. So how well does this stack up against several of the other characters in the Matoran universe, and in general, does it make sense as a Rahi as part of this world? Let's consider all that and more as we dive into the Metru Mantis. All right, so here we have the Metru Mantis. You can probably see it's very clear exactly what animal this is supposed to represent, obviously praying mantis. And I think it gets that point across pretty well, at least in terms of aesthetics. But let's just start off with our first point here, which is posability. This is a bit of an unorthodox creature because it's not like many of the others, which are generally bipedals. This one has a little bit of a unique structure going on. Of course, you've got the four legs, which are very spindly. They're literally technic axles used as the feet, which can be just moved around like so. You can just see that they're mounted on ball joints. I will say though that unfortunately, these can splay out all the way and it's really not that great for posability. For instance, it continually just keeps on wanting to fall over unless you have all of these very thin and spindly legs adhered to the ground. One of them will kind of start to shoot out and then once one goes, all of them go. Kind of annoying to pose if your ground does not have a lot of friction to it. The only reason why it's really staying up right now is that because my review studio actually does have a friction textured ground. For most surfaces though, it isn't the best grip because again, you're just using Technic axles to make it stand up. Moving on, of course, though, you've basically got the arms, which are mounted just like a standard praying mantis. You've got a bend here for, I guess, the elbow, and then you've got the Liwa Air Katana Sword being moved right down, kind of like the pincers of a mantis to attack like this. And you've also got the head, which can be moved around. Head, obviously, is super, super simple, literally just a standard hand with two ball joints sticking on the sides. I've seen this technique used a ton of times for different animals, and I think for this one, it really does work, especially because you can clearly see the molding marks on the edges of the eyeballs here, which actually do look like they're pupils. So you actually have this very fine and small detail of the piece looking like they're actually eyeballs for this creature, which I think is a pretty fun detail. Other than this though, there's literally no other way you can move this around, and it's a very simple model as well literally just a Borok ribcage attached at an angle to a Rakshi ribcage, and basically the limbs are just stuck on. However, do not let that simplicity fool you. I will say that this is actually a pretty good build, aesthetically speaking, and even though it is so simple, it really does clearly get the point across. I can very clearly see that this is supposed to be a mantis creature, which is something that I really do appreciate. Oftentimes, some of the Rahi are a little bit hard to parse exactly what real-world animal they're supposed to represent, even if they're named after said animal. It's kind of difficult to figure out what's what, but this one, again, very, very clearly supposed to be a mantis. Moving on, of course, building techniques speaking, I'd say that this is relatively very, very simple for building techniques. Big con is that it keeps on collapsing. As you can see, it's very frustrating how it keeps on giving way for the legs here just because the legs basically have no friction to the end. But I'm not really sure how else the builder would have solved this issue other than maybe putting some points 
on the ends and the tips of the legs to have it have a little bit more grip while sticking on the ground. And then at that point, you kind of lose this aesthetic of having the legs curling all the way down. So it's definitely a mixed bag in terms of the building techniques for the legs. It's very simple and that simplicity does work in its favor to making it feel very realistic as a creature. But at the same time, not a lot of friction here. Of course, moving on to the quote unquote torso build, or I guess this is just the body build. I think that the shaping done for this model actually works out pretty well. You've got the back piece of the, I guess, abdomen of this creature being used of the Borok rib cage, which does have a nice curved look to it. And I think that it all works together quite well having the Technic beam transition up to this forward Rakshi spine curve here. Again, you have the head, which is a very simple technique, but does do its job very well. These limbs, however, are a little bit too basic in my opinion. I mean, they're literally just Rakshi legs with this piece attached onto it. Maybe you would have wanted to see something a little bit more unique, especially because at certain angles, you can see that it's very clearly mounted below where the torso would be. It'd be nicer if maybe this was somehow mounted coming off of this point instead of being mounted on below. Feel like you could have solved that with maybe ball joints here and doing some different building techniques for the arms, but it isn't too, too bad, and it definitely gets the point across aesthetically. And speaking of aesthetics, I'm generally quite happy with how good this model looks in terms of, again, telling me exactly what animal it's supposed to be. You can actually get this into a lot of very interesting poses, and more so than you may imagine, just by virtue of the amount of articulation points that it has within the legs and the arms. Here you can see maybe it's going in for a striking attack versus being a little bit more defensive and peering from behind in this position like so. You can really get a lot of character out of this very small build, and I think that's what Bionicle Rahi are all about, depicting an animal and giving it a lot of character throughout the build, which I think is really nice. The parts usage of the Liwa Air Katanas also is a really good part use for the blades of the Mantis here. And while I do wish that the legs had a little bit more to them, I am generally okay with the Technic axles, mostly because in real life, the legs are also very skinny. Maybe what could have been better if they used the longer connector pieces all the way down, but I can understand why they did this both to conserve parts and also try to make it taper off at the end. But with that, honestly, there isn't too, too much else I can say in particular about the Metru Mantis. It's a very simple build, comes together very quickly, but is one of the better looking Rahi just due to how good it represents the main animal. Let's zoom out and take a look at some representative samples. All right, so here I brought alongside some representative samples alongside this insectoid Rahi to compare it against. It was said in lore that the Nui Jaga are its main prey, it uses its slashing pincers to attack the Nui Jaga and primarily hunts at night. It also said that they posed a significant threat to the Visorak because they were hunting the spiders to the point where Sidorak actually ordered certain Kograk to try to capture and destroy the Metru Mantises because they were culling the Visorak ranks in Metru Nui. So realistically, I think storyline-wise, the biggest thing for me to see here is that can I realistically see this preying on these other animals? And honestly, I think that I can see it. Especially with the Nui Jaga, I can imagine that the Metru Mantis is a lot more agile, maybe dealing with some quick cuts to it, paralyzing it, or cutting off the legs or something to be able to feed on the Nui Jaga. They're pretty equally scaled as well, so it's almost like a real-life Mantis taking on a real-life Scorpion and seeing who would win that fight. Of course, the Scorpion's got its stinging tail to attack back at the Mantis, but you've also got two additional weapons on the claws here, so I can see it being a pretty fair fight between these two. In terms of the Visorak, I can also see that they could probably quickly evade the pincers of the Visorak. There's not a lot to grab onto because the legs and arms are just so spindly, the pincers might be missing, and instead it can deal, again, quick attacks to the Visorak to start to feed on them. So, definitely does make sense to me in-universe. And again, this is primarily made out of existing Bionicle pieces using techniques and sensibilities that do make it feel like an in-universe Rahi. So with that regard, I think that this definitely does belong well in the universe. If anything, the spindliness of the legs throws me off a little bit and kind of just makes me immediately think, oh, there's some Technic beams there instead of thinking of them as actual legs, because previously we've gotten a little bit more beefy legs, even for some of the insects. So that's the only thing that kind of throws me off a little bit, but it does definitely help with the aesthetics 
I just feel like they're maybe even just a little bit too skinny for this model, especially now that I have the other Rocky in comparison with them. And so I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 in terms of believability in universe. I think it does generally make sense for the most part, does make it feel like it would be a predator for all of these Rahi, but at the same time, legs are a little bit spindly and there are a few things proportion-wise that make it feel a little bit odd. But then moving on, setting aside these representative samples, we can take a look at the main build here and start to categorize it based on the other points for this review. Starting off with posability, as I mentioned and as you just saw, kind of annoying how it tends to really slump on the ground unless you've got all four legs at very strict angles and even then some of them will just splay out and cause it to fall over, especially on surfaces with not a lot of friction. The other thing, posability wise that I think that kind of hurts it a little bit are, again, just how small and narrow the contact points are for the feet, which really accentuates it and makes it a lot easier to splay outwards because there's not a lot of grip here. However, you still can get it into very fun and unique poses, whether it be striking at prey like so, or even just defending itself, maybe putting its arms up, really does feel like a real life mantis and yeah, it really does feel like you can get good poses with this animal, have it be doing some dynamic stuff, and it has a lot of personality to it. So posability-wise, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's a little frustrating how it continually will fall over, although it's not nearly as bad as many other models, and you can still relatively easily get it in a walking pose as long as you're pretty careful with how you display the legs. The arms, again, you can get it into really unique poses, doing some attacks or lunges, so it really does feel like an animal come to life in the bionicle world, so I'm definitely giving it props for that. Moving on, though, to building techniques, I think that while it is simple, of course, the body is built very well, definitely does feel like a praying mantis. The legs may be a little bit too simple to me, also those kind of hurt it a little bit on posability, so a bit of a con with the legs. The arms, while they are just reusing Rakshi limbs, I think it does its job all right. I mean, I don't know exactly how else you would have modified it unless, as I mentioned earlier in the review, you were able to mount the arms right on this axle here. So for building techniques, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. It's nothing amazing, nothing that blew me away, but they get the point across and they do their job. So I think that's pretty fair for this model. It's a average-esque score. It's nothing crazily good, nothing bad either. So just about average. And then moving on finally to aesthetics, agnostic of the believability in universe. I think that aesthetically speaking, this does its job as convincing me that it's a praying mantis bionicle build. Definitely does feel like the animal it's supposed to represent. And I really do like the proportions of this model as well. It feels very realistic and well proportioned. And so aesthetically speaking, I think I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Really, the only thing that's holding it back are the legs being so spindly, and immediately when seeing them, my brain doesn't really think legs, it just immediately goes, oh, those are Technic axles. So, probably could have used a little bit something more unique for the legs, or maybe beefing it up a little bit, but everything else, I'd say, is pretty tip-top and pretty good for a Rahi of this scale. But that about sums up this review of the Metru Mantis. It's a little bit of a shorter review than usual because it is a shorter set than usual, a bit of a smaller guy. But I hope that you enjoyed this review. Let me know down in the comments below if any of you have built this or are considering building it. What do you think of it? And do you agree or disagree with the rankings given in the review? As usual, stay tuned to Duck Bricks where every Monday, unless otherwise stated, there will be a brand new Bionicle fan and review. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you again very soon and bye bye for now.